Hey there, happy Monday. How are we all today? Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Beautiful weather here today and gym's open. I'm going to do legs at the actual gym tonight. Oh my gosh. Just take a moment to let that sink in. <laughs> if you've read the description of today's video fam, you will know exactly what I'm about to dish for you and it is straight fire. I'm going to be talking from experience so this is going to be a bit of a vulnerable post for me as well because i don't usually um a lot of people don't know that i actually have been through a weight loss struggle of my own a lot of people seem to look at me and just think that i've always been fit um and that i just know what i'm doing and i've never really had to go through the mud um to lose the weight and get into the shape i am now and i have so i want to talk to you about that i want to tell you guys what it took me over five years to learn. I'm going to dish you some awesome tips here. I'm just inviting some people along to get this party started. That's why I'm looking at my phone screen. Funny, as you know, do this at the start of every live. Um, this is, I'm going to be dishing for you the biggest tips that I've learned along my journey, the things I learned and, and still learning um, that really helped me overcome the yo-yo dieting, the falling off the wagon, the things that hold you back. So, you know, I thought, why not tell you guys about all of this and share what the biggest takeaways were for me on my journey so that you can stop falling off the wagon, so that you can get consistent results, get them faster, and don't waste years like I did. Um, so I hope you're ready for it. Grab a pen and paper, guys, because this one is going to be a straight off by all. I think I should stop inviting people because I've been here for like an, eight, an hour doing it. Hello, we've got so many people saying hello. Who have we got? Oh, my phone screen. Hey, Jana. How you doing, beautiful? Rebecca. Hey, gorgeous. Taylor. Caitlin. Nikki. Hey. Now, as always, fam, if there's anything I'm talking about that either doesn't make sense or that you want me to go over and cover more of, or if you've got a question that I haven't even touched on, drop it in the comments because I will answer as I go. I see them all pop up. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Caitlin. I'm loving this. Um, also, guys, feel free to share this video and get some other people watching because this one is going to be awesome. Um, we don't really want anyone missing out on this because if you are on a weight loss journey of your own, it can be mind-blowingly tricky. There's so much that comes into it and there is so much information out there that your, your mind just boggles. Um, and you know, what I'm going to share with you here today are not the typical things that you hear people talking about. You know, when, when you say to someone, how do I lose weight? The things I'm about to tell you here tonight are not the answers you're going to get, but they are the most important things that you need to know, which are going to stop you falling off the wagon. They're going to stop you wasting years trying to work out what's going on for yourself because the results are confusing. You know, our bodies do funny, different things all the time. Um, what happens to your body is going to be different to what happens to someone else's. And so if you're trying to work out what's going on for you based off what someone else has, you're going to be forever chasing your tail. So I'm going to help you overcome all of that by sharing my journey and what I learned about that along the way. Hey, Renee, how you doing, gorgeous? So please, guys, feel free to, um, to comment as I go and ask any questions. It is what I'm here for mainly is to help you. Um, mainly, 100% is to help you. <laughs> so yeah grab a pen and paper fam and also this will be going up on my youtube as well uh tomorrow so you can jump back and watch it there and find it easily i've got an entire playlist called get fit with mj um where all of these videos go so they're just easy to find you don't have to scroll through all my videos on facebook so awesome um i came to seven i wanted it to be five but there was more so i thought you know once i'd written down five of them i thought no this other ones kept coming up. I thought, that's just as important. That's just as important. So there's seven. I know it seems like an odd number. Ten was just going to be going on and on and on and on. So I picked the most important ones I could think of. Um, so, you know, I, I want to give you some background into me um, and what's going on for me. I, I need to keep sharing this journey because we've got new people coming into the FitFam, new people coming on board as um, friends for me on Facebook who don't necessarily know this about me. And it, I think it's a really important thing that you do know that I'm not just dishing out weight loss advice to you without having actually gone through the troubles myself. Um, so, you know, as a kid, I was, I was fit. Um, so yeah, I, I did have a naturally faster metabolism when I was younger. Um, 
I grew up on property. I had horses, so I was always in the pony club. I was always riding horses. We had a swimming pool, so I would come straight home from school. I actually wore my bikini to school. I would throw my clothes off as soon as I got home straight in the pool, cut and laps. I never had to worry about my fitness because it was just always natural for me. I was always running around on the property, riding horses, and then later in my high school years playing netball. So I was playing state league netball as well. So netball training, netball, and just being an active person is what kept me fit. Didn't think twice about what the food I was putting in my mouth, just living my life, whatever, wasn't even thinking twice. Then got to the age of, you know, 17, 18, as naturally our bodies do, as females, mine slowed down. My metabolism slowed down, wasn't ready for it. But also I stopped playing netball and I hadn't been riding horses for years and now I lived in the city, so I didn't have property to run around on either. So here's me going to the shop at school, eating caramel slice, going to KFC on my lunch break. Um, you name it. I, me and my friends would go to Hungry Jack's after netball training. And then I stopped playing netball. My diet stayed the same and my exercise plummeted. So I, I sort of found myself in a situation where it was a slow burn for me. I didn't really notice anything going on. And then one day... I went to put on a pair of shorts and they nearly didn't do up. And they were my, like my favorite shorts the year before. And I stood in the mirror and I looked at my body and I thought, I, because I'd always been fit in my mind, my body was always fit, never, never picked myself to pieces. And then I, it hit me and I just thought, wow, who, who's that girl in the mirror? It, I actually took a moment to look and realized I had cellulite on my thighs. My belly had cellulite. And it hadn't really occurred to me before then, but my jackets and things were really tight around my arms. And, you know, to go like that in a jacket was just, I, I felt, I thought back about it and realized that that had been really uncomfortable to do. And yeah, Jess, awesome. Watch when you get back, lovely. You'll love this story, actually, I think. Um, so yeah, I, I was just standing in front of the mirror and my heart literally just sank because all of this stuff that had been going on to my body that I hadn't thought twice about just hit me like a freight train. And all of a sudden I had like 15 kilos of extra of body fat on me that I needed to lose. And I didn't know how. I had no idea what I was doing. I had never had to focus on healthy eating. I had never had to actually think about going to a gym and exercising. These are things, these are foreign things to me. And I was what was I, 18? And so that panic that struck me because I instantly just thought, okay, calorie restriction. Then, and, and your head just swims. Like, what do you do? How do you do it? How do you make sure you're getting it right? This weight needs to be gone now. And so I tried all of those things. You know, I, I started with the calorie restriction and then I tried some juice detoxes. I tried going low fat and low carb together, worst decision of my life. Um, I got to the point where I was eating such low fats and such low carbs that I actually made myself sick because I had a huge nutrient deficiency going on in my body. I didn't even know it was happening. I got to the point where I was temporarily allergic to, well not allergic, but intolerant to almonds and avocado, could not eat anything that was gonna be hard for my body to digest. Um, I'm now allergic to perfume because I deprived my body of so many nutrients when I was trying to strictly calorie restrict so much. Um, that now, if you spray perfume on my skin and my skin gets warm, I come out in a huge rash and it's itchy for days. That never used to happen to me until I got unwell. Um, I couldn't eat anything high in sodium because my stomach just couldn't handle it. I was so deficient in, I, don't, I can't even remember what nutrients they were, that what happened, but something broke in my body and a lot of it still isn't fixed. Um, so I tried all these things, the juice tox, detoxes, the excessive cardio. I would eat a handful of almonds and then go to the gym. This is before I realized I was intolerant to almonds and do an hour running on the treadmill. And those almonds are probably one of two meals I'd had all day. I was, I was fucking it up <laughs> big time. Um, and, and there's so much that you don't know. Like I, I didn't know how to go into the weight section at the gym and actually build muscle tone to burn more fat. I didn't know that was a thing. I I was jumping on the scales, getting so confused. Why have I gone up? Why have I gone down? What am I going to do? Oh my God, I can't navigate this. The scales are going up and down and I'm doing the same thing. Uh, um, getting the diet right was the scariest part for me, especially when I got sick. I really panicked. 
um, I really thought, well, what am I going to do now? I've tried it all. I, ju I just don't know. Um, so, of course, I started researching into health, to nutrition and to um, exercise. Naturally, that's how I became a personal trainer because that happened to me. I got so unwell and still have allergies from the, what I did to my body that now I've got to a point where I'm so passionate about helping people get their body in the best shape that they possibly can in the healthiest way um, so that no one has to go through that. And, you know, I'm 30 now, and this all started when I was 17, 18. Um, now, I did a fitness comp in 2013, which is where, you know, you diet down, you get to a, a position where you can wear like a, a sports outfit on stage and you get judged for how lean you are. I did it as an experience to see what the human body is capable of and to see what I could do with myself in a healthy way. Having a coach do that for me opened my eyes in ways that you would never imagine. Like just having her there, right there to be like, this is the answer to your question. This is why this is happening. This is why we're doing this. And knowing what I was doing and why I was doing it as I was doing it was basically the thing that put me onto the path I'm on now and got me to where I am and made me realize that it is so hard to understand if you don't have someone giving you the tips and the tricks along the way. Hey, Crystal. Hey, Rora. So obviously I've gone out and I've studied more of this myself. I've become certified in, you know, meal planning and nutrition. I've become certified in personal training and, and exercise programming. Um, and so it's things like this that are the reason I want to do videos like this for you guys, because I've spent almost 10 years working this stuff out. The things that people don't tell you when you say, I want to lose weight, you're not going to get these things as the answer, but they are so crucial. Hi, Sarah. How you doing, lovely? So, so that's my journey. Um, I got to a point where I, I did the full 360. I started out healthy, gained weight tried everything to lose the weight, made myself very unwell, and then came back to doing it the holistic, natural, proper approach. But the other little things, not, I'm not going to tell you about what to eat or what workouts to do in this video. I'm going to tell you about the exact things you need to know to understand your journey so that when things don't go the way you expect them to, you don't give up and run for the hills and then try to start again on Monday and waste years yo-yoing. That's what I'm here to help you with tonight. I'm here to help you get consistency essentially. Hi, hey Christy. How you doing? Beautiful. And I did see a message from Angie. You're so inspiring. Love you ever so much. Oh, babe. Mwah, I love you too. You're so beautiful. I'm so proud of you too. Absolutely crushing your forever fit journey. Um, so look, I'm just going to dive into it, guys. Seven things that you will spend years working out for yourself if you ever do, or, and also seven things that, you know, no one's ever going to tell you unless you ask and you have to know to ask. So here's the biggest thing that I learned. And the more I talk to the girls that are doing Forever Fit as well um, about their results, I'm seeing such a, a variance of where the results are coming from. Now, I cannot stress this enough. I've actually decided I hate the scales. Scales will not tell you your progress. They just, they just don't. I've had so many girls come to me with centimetres lost, like tens of centimetres lost off their body, dress sizes, two dress sizes gone, and the scales haven't budged. They're getting on the scales every day thinking they're not getting any results, but their body is dropping fat like it's a sack of potatoes. The fat's melting off, but they don't think it is because they're only getting on the scales. They're not taking photos. They're not doing measurements. I did this. I spent years thinking I was stuffing it up, thinking I was getting nowhere because all I was doing was worrying about what the scale said and they kept staying the same or they'd go up, then they'd go down, then they'd go up and I had no idea why. So I kept changing what I was doing because of what the scales were saying, but what the scales were saying was nonsense. So I was ruining my own progress by giving up, falling off the wagon, binging because I thought I'll oh, stuff it. I'm not losing weight anyway, when in actual fact I was. I, I should have been measuring. I should have been taking photos. And it wasn't until I did my fitness comp with my coach that I learned that and I actually saw the difference. I had so many weeks where the photos changed and the scales never did. Now, I, yeah, so I've officially decided I actually hate the scales. Hey, Lauren. So just be aware that if the scales aren't changing, please stop using them. Get some photos. Every week, same position, same lighting, same time of day. 
Same clothing. Take those photos relentlessly. They are your best progress indicator. Then your measurements. And then if you must, the scales. But that's my biggest tip. Nothing will screw with your head more than the number on the scales, I promise you. So don't let that happen. Now, two is when you fall off the wagon, you have not failed. When you fall off the wagon, you've made a mistake to learn from. Think of it like a kid learning to walk. When a child is learning to walk, they take two steps, they fall over. What do they do? Do they sit on the floor and go, well, I'm never going to learn to walk? No, they get back up and they try again. And they try again and again and again and again until they take more steps, more steps, more steps. They learn from every time they fall down, they go, oh, I fell down because I lent backwards. So they don't lean backwards. You get where I'm going with this? So if you are falling off the wagon, you are only making mistakes and learning to walk better. Learn from those mistakes. Every time you make a mistake, learn from it. Don't think that you failed. Embrace the fact that that's an opportunity for you to learn and get better. Hey, Tamara. Hey, Gabby. So that's one of the most important things that I can stress to you now. In hindsight for myself, I would have one little slip up on a, like a Monday and think, oh, well, my week's done. Might as well just do whatever I want for the rest of the week. And then a whole week is gone, a whole opportunity for me to have gotten better. And I wasted it because I thought I'd failed by falling off the wagon once. Whereas I could have turned around and gone, okay, I didn't enjoy the feeling I had from eating that chocolate bar that I shouldn't have had. It's one day, it's one snack. I'm going to use the memory of how bad I felt to make me not want to do that again. And each time you do that, you get stronger at not wanting the thing that made you feel crap. So I cannot stress enough to learn from those mistakes. Crystal, so true. I yo-yo dieted so much from vegan to keto to paleo and stuffed my metabolism. Yeah, took me years to get my metabolism back. I've only just overcome amenorrhea, which is um, not having a period from not, from not eating enough. It took me three, nearly three years to get my period back. Um, a coach now who's really helped me start to drop the weight and in a healthy, satisfying way. Exactly, yes. Yeah, having someone there that knows what they're doing and can help you find your way, yeah, really can't um, stress how important that is enough. Hey, Catherine. So thank you for sharing that beautiful. I really love that, Crystal. Um, so yeah, that's number two. Don't think that you failed when you fall off the wagon. Learn from it as a mistake, like little kids do when they're learning to walk. You always get back up, which leads me into um, another one that I have, another point that I have um coming up for you in a moment, which I probably could say now because they're not really in any cons any sort of order. Okay, yeah, let's do that. So not only are you learning from your mistakes when you fall off the wagon, it's not failure, it's an opportunity to learn and get stronger. Consistency is the most important thing. And that's number four. Number four is consistency is the most important thing. So if anything else, as long as you keep doing your best and you keep making the healthy choices as often as possible. You can have little dips here and there where you make bad choices. As long as you are consistent in the healthy choices, that's what's going to get you the results. And also it's going to get you the lifelong results because that consistency is what becomes the habit, is what becomes the lifelong thing that you do forever. A diet that you don't intend to keep up for the rest of your life is never going to work. You're never going to keep the weight off because as soon as you change what you're doing, your body will just gain the weight back. You need to do it in a way that you intend to keep up forever. That's why the juice detoxes, the heavy calorie restriction, the low carb, low fat for me, they never worked because I wasn't doing those things 100% of the time. And I did see a message here. Crystal saw that one. Brie, I'm a fad dieter 100%. Yeah, babe. So we need to get you doing some consistent things, some things that are going to help you adopt lifelong habits that are what's going to get the weight off and keep it off because that's the lifestyle you're going to be living. Sky, I can't fit in clothes that I used to be really tight. Now they fit perfectly and I've lost three kilos or so. Lost belly fat and I can see it change all the time. Yes, see beautiful, that's what I'm talking about. And I'm so proud of you, Sky. You are absolutely crushing your journey. The fact that you're seeing the difference in the way that your clothes are fitting. That's another great measurement that you can do. You don't have to take photos. You don't have to take measurements. If you've got some clothes you want to put on that are non-stretchy and you can feel them getting looser and more comfortable, that's another great way to measure. 
And I love that sky. So thank you for sharing that with everyone, beautiful, because you are absolutely crushing your forever fit journey. I'm so proud of you. Hey, Tegan, how you doing, beautiful? So that's number four. Consistency is the most important thing. You can fall off the wagon as, as long as you like, but if you consistently get back on it and keep practicing and keep getting better and just keep trying and find a way that is something you can continue doing for the rest of your life, that's where the winners are. So then number five, wait, that was number three. Consistency was number three. Sorry, guys, I'm getting you all confused here. So one was the scales don't tell the truth. Two was if you fall off the wagon, it's not a failure, it's a lesson. Three is that consistency is the biggest, most important factor. So four, and this is a really important one as well, guys. This is something that will bring you unstuck anytime if you're not being careful. And that is to not compare your journey to other people. Hi, Talia. How you doing, lovely? If you are comparing the results you're getting to the results someone else is getting, you will always be chasing someone else's results. And that's not how our bodies work. Everyone's body is different. Everyone's body is unique. Everyone's lifestyle is different. Everyone's goals are different. You might want to lose 10 kilos just like the person next to you, but her body's going to do it differently to yours. And you could do the exact same thing. And your bodies are still going to get different results. So if you're always comparing that person's results, thinking that you failed if you don't get the same results, you can't win a race if you're running someone else's race. You cannot win your own race in someone else's lane. You've got to stay in your lane. Focus on you and your results because trying to achieve what someone else is getting, it's never going to work because your body's not doing it the same way. So embrace the fact that your journey will be different and unique in your own way and find what works for you specifically and follow what your body is telling you. Um, so yeah, that's, that's four. Don't compare yourself to anyone else's journey because if someone else is getting certain results and you're not, it does not mean you're failing. And if you're watching what they're doing, you're not giving your body what it needs. So you're missing opportunities to get results because you're not focusing on what your body needs and wants. Sky, I make things and meals work for me in the best way I can and it's working and see results and picking these good habit. And she, yeah, absolutely, babe. Yeah, and the way that we communicate and that I help you fit those things in and help you make the healthy food choices around, you know, the changes that you have to make for work and lifestyle, I'm absolutely loving it. That's why I'm so proud of you, babe. Um, so that was four, is don't compare your journey to anyone else. Now, five is the key to success. Now, I cannot stress this enough either, and this is my absolute favorite tip. You will always hear me talking about this, and that is the number one key to success is to plan and be prepared. Plan your meals for the week. Plan your workouts. Make yourself to-do lists with your workouts and your meals on them. Check them off. Have your meals prepped, ready to go, so that when you are out and about, when you are caught short, you're not reaching for unhealthy things. You've got the food right there. Always be prepared with healthy options. And if you don't have food right there, be prepared in your mind to say, okay, if I get caught out on the road and it's too late to cook food and I have to get takeaway, these are my healthy options. So you know exactly where to go to make sure that you don't fall off the wagon. As long as at the forefront of your mind, you always have the healthy food, ready to go and your workouts are always planned and you keep yourself accountable to get them done with to-do lists, that is the number one key to your success because putting everything into a plan is how you clear the brain fog and don't accidentally miss things like meals and, and workouts. I cannot stress how important planning and preparation is. I did not start to see real results until I, and I wasn't able to get into a proper routine to keep me consistent until I started planning these things and having my meals ready to go. Eventually, you start to create a mental image in your mind of what your days look like, what foods you eat, um, what going out foods you have, what workouts you do and how to squeeze them in when, when you best can. You know, you start to build a mental image of how to do that. So I can help, I can easily keep up a healthy lifestyle now because I know how to make the healthy food choices. I don't want to make bad ones because I've seen the results I get from making good ones. And I instantly, the first thing I think of if my routine gets changed up, I'm like, okay, but where does my workout fit in there? So you get yourself to that spot and you'll never go backwards ever again. Number six 
is very, very important. And this one is going to stop you from falling off the wagon every single time. This is to trust the process. And what I mean by that is your results are not always going to be straight line. So you are not going to always consistently lose weight. Sometimes you might lose weight, you know, you, you might lose a good amount of weight. Other times you might plateau. Other times you may gain a little bit of weight, depending on what you do. But your body's never just going to lose weight like this. It's going to lose it like this. It's going to be a downward trend, but it's going to go up and down along the way. Now, the key here is to trust the process when you see things stop moving or go up a little. Don't freak out and think that the whole system is broken. It's been working. So if you get to here, you started your journey up here, you got to here, and you didn't lose weight a couple of weeks, and you think the whole thing is broken, it's not because you've been consistently losing weight. Just keep at it. Maybe one little thing needs changing up to break your plateau which is where a coach can come in handy because you've got someone there that can say, okay, let's try changing this. But don't just think that the whole thing is broken because you stopped losing weight for a few weeks. It's been working. So we know we're doing the right thing. Don't lose hope just because of a few little slip ups here and there. Trust the process. It does work. It's been working for you if you've been losing the weight. So don't let one little slip up um, or one little plateau bring you completely unstuck and make you think that it's all going to be undone it won't be now number seven now this one guys is going to stop you from reaching for the food and stop you binge eating it's going to stop you eating those unhealthy snacks and what have we got here scott i see pics on facebook about what other people are using or doing and i ignore them they are doing different things I mean, yeah absolutely babe hey abby hey doing lovely yes yeah, guy that's great i'm so proud of you for that yeah, and that you love to eat healthy food. That is what I aim to help you do, is to appreciate the way that healthy food makes you feel and understand where to fit balanced meals in, like the things that, you know, like your pizza, your pasta, your stuff that you probably shouldn't eat all the time, cookies, muffins, all that, how to incorporate that with balance. That's a big thing that I'm for as well. Um, anyway, number seven is that, this is my favorite one because a lot of people don't realize this. And I didn't realize it until I think it wasn't even when my coach didn't even tell me this when I did my comp. I worked this out for myself only like a couple of years ago. Your body will fight fat loss. Our bodies, I already knew that bodies don't want to lose fat because fat is a um, survival mechanism. Fat is your body's favorite energy source. So um, your body's going to want to keep trying to store fat to make sure that should something severe happen, you've got energy stored for survival, for it to feed off for energy to keep yourself running, essentially. Um, so that's the thing. All right. So your body loves fat. And so if you're trying to lose fat, that's why it's easier to gain weight than it is to lose it because your body doesn't really want to lose it. So you've got to do it the right way to make sure that you convince your body it's safe to lose this fat now. So... Yes, your body is going to be fighting against you. It's, it doesn't want to lose the fat. It's going to fight that. And your brain is going to do an exceptional job of tricking you into thinking you need food when you don't. So when, when you get to a point and you start to be successfully losing weight, you might hit um, a point where you lose, like say, 5 to 10 kilos or something, or maybe anywhere up to that, you'll start noticing that you'll feel like you want to start reaching for food and that you don't need, food that you know you don't need, you're going to start, you might even feel feelings of fake hunger. Like you, you could think, but I've eaten enough food today. I've been eating this amount of food for ages. Why am I more hungry now? Don't fall into the trap of thinking that your metabolism has sped up and so you need to eat more. Your body is trying to trick you into thinking that you you should eat the food. It will give you false feelings of hunger. It will make you crave food like nothing else. And then that little devil in your ear will come out and say, hey, but you've lost the weight. So you can afford to do this now. Don't fall into that trap. I used to fall into that trap so many times where I would say, oh, I lost five kilos. I, I can go out and have a massive night. I'm not going to gain five kilos in two days. But then that turns into the next week because you're still in that mindset of, Oh, but I lost the weight. I think I've got a little bit more wiggle room here, surely. And your brain is still playing with you and saying, yeah, do it, do it, do it, do it. And so you listen and then you eat the food and you don't, you don't stay strict on yourself and eat the, and stay in the healthy stuff. You don't do your 
well, I was still doing my workouts, but it's very easy to want to bail. And, and that's your body trying to fight the fat loss and you've let it win. I let it win so many times and I would find myself taking two steps forward and one step back with my weight loss because I was consistently losing a little bit. Then my body would go, oh, we need to gain some more weight. We can't be keeping to lose this weight. Make her eat, make her eat. And so I would. And so you need to be aware that that is going to happen. You need to be aware that your body and your brain are going to fight the fat loss and your brain is going to play tricks on you and make you believe that you need to eat more. So when you are aware that that is a thing, it makes it so much easier for you to understand that you've followed your meal plan that you've set yourself or whatever diet you're following. You've set yourself your meal plan. You know you've eaten enough food for the day. You know you shouldn't feel hungry, but you don't know why you feel hungry. That's most likely what it is. So if you know that, it's easy to go, oh, it's just my brain playing tricks. I'm just not going to eat because I know I don't need to. Um, and then once you do that, you get to a point where your body's just going to go, oh, well, she's not listening. You know, like it's not actually going to say that because it's not a person in and of itself. But <laughs> it, your, your brain's habits will change. So your body is going to adapt to what you're doing and it's going to, it's like breaking a habit. Your body will stop telling you. Your body will stop fighting the fat loss. All you've got to do is get through that little period. And it, it might rear its head every now and then down the track as well. But if you're aware of it, you can avoid falling a victim to it. That's all I'm basically saying there on that one. Crystal, I fell into that trap years ago. Yeah, <laughs> took me ages to work out what was going on. I'm like, why do I always want to eat more when I lose the weight? Shouldn't I be more motivated to not eat the food? And then I put two and two together and I because I knew that our bodies don't like to lose fat. So I thought, oh, it's, it's my brain's literally just trying to tell me to eat more food so I don't keep losing fat. Don't need it. Not going to do it. Whereas now I know that that's a thing. And plus, I'm in such a good routine now where I do have like a balanced refeed meal every weekend. So I'll be on my healthy eating, you know, doing my normal thing throughout the week. On a Saturday night, I'll have whatever I want. One night on the weekend, I'll just do whatever I want. And then I'm straight back into it after that. So I don't get those cravings anymore because I've got that balance, um, which is what the FitFam are learning. That's what I teach the FitFam as well. And that's really how you get lasting results. Because if you can beat the habit that makes you want to binge and the things that make you crave junk food or foods that you shouldn't eat as much of, that's how you overcome the things that set you back because you don't want to reach for those foods all the time. And you know, um, you know that you're going to get an opportunity to have the foods that you want. You just learn to limit them. That's mainly the point. Um, I know Sky sent another, I haven't got that yet. And when I feel like that, I do something to get my mind off it. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely smashing it, babe. I'm so proud. Hi Meg. How you doing? Lovely. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the seven of them fam. So recap one scales, do not tell the whole picture Two, if you fall off the lesson, it's, if you fall off the wagon, it's a lesson, not a failure. Learn from it like a baby learning to walk. You are so inspiring. I cannot wait for our phone call. Oh, Nikki, me either. I'm so excited to chat to you. It's going to be so great. Yes. And where was I? Three was consistency is the most important thing. The most important thing. Just stay at it. Just keep trying. Just keep practicing and getting better. Four was do not compare your journey to someone else's. You are not running their race. If you keep looking at what they're doing, you're going to miss the opportunities to better your own progress. Five was the key to success is planning and preparation. And I cannot stress that enough. Take the pressure off your brain. Get your tasks out of your head, onto paper, prep your meals, make your own life easier. Even if you're not trying to lose weight, just do it to make your life easier, honestly. Six, trust the process. You're going to have ups, you're going to have downs, but just trust that what you are doing is working. If you've been seeing results and then you stop seeing the results, what you were doing was right. It maybe just needs a little tweak. Don't throw the whole thing in the air and think it's not working anymore at all. Just don't give up. Trust the process. And seven was that your body is going to fight fat loss. It is going to, your brain is going to trick you into eating foods you do not need. Be aware of that when it happens, when you feel hungry or you feel like you, you're just craving foods that you know you don't need and you can't work out why, that's what it is. So be aware of that so that you can avoid it. You will overcome it. Keep overcoming it till it becomes a habit and your brain just doesn't do that to you anymore and then if that does rear its head again down the track you'll be so strong by then that it won't even be an issue and it'll be gone in a couple of days promise you've been there 
still get it now. So, yeah, there we go. I hope this has been super helpful for you guys. And if you have been taking notes, which I really highly recommend, you can implement these things into what you're doing and make sure that you, you pay attention to these things. They are going to get you consistent results. These are the little things that no one tells you that actually add up to getting you to stay on track. Um, so looking back, like, you know, you can have the diet laid out in front of you. You can have the workout program laid out in front of you. But if you don't know these things, you're going to come unstuck all the time because you're going to lose that belief in yourself and what you're doing. And that's what I'm here tonight to help you overcome. Now, of course, if anyone here that's watching or watches this after it's been posted and, you know, you're on a, a weight loss journey or you're trying to lose weight, but you aren't sure what to do when it comes to food or you're not sure what workouts you should be doing well, you're not sure how to fit it all into your busy lifestyle, send me a DM saying fit. We'll have a chat about your goals and your specific lifestyle and we'll see if I can help you get consistent results that are going to last. So, um, yeah, like that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help. So anyone that, that feels like they're in that position that feels stuck or a bit lost, just send me a DM saying fit and let's see what we can do for you. Other than that, fam, this has been so fun. I have loved doing this video for you guys. Now, I am off to the gym to train legs. It's been like six months. It's been a minute. I'm so excited. Hi, Evelyn. Lovely. You've just missed us. I'm about to sign off, but please watch the replay because this is an absolute banger of a video. I'm loving doing this topic for you guys. Um, so yeah, if anyone's got any questions for me or anything at all, please, um, drop them in the comments after this is posted and tag me so I get the notification and I can come in and I can help you. Or like I said before, send me a DM saying fit and let's discuss specifically for you what's going to work best because everyone's different. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. This has been an absolute blast and I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.